morning and happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. I am your special host to kick off the week today. My name is Joanne. I am the marketing director here with Legendary Marketer. And before we bring on today's guests, let's do a couple housekeeping keeping items. If I could talk this morning, that would be fantastic. <laughs> if you are brand new to the show and you would like to receive text reminders when we are going live. All you need to do is text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. You'll get a reminder Monday through Friday, just a couple minutes right after we go live um, on Facebook with uh, our daily interview. It hasn't come in yet, but I'm sure it will within the next couple minutes. Um, but it's a great way to get the reminder see who's coming on, hop on, get your morning, whatever your time zone is, afternoon dose of inspiration, education. A lot of these are mini mastermind conversations, quite honestly. What's working right now? What's worked for someone else? How did they overcome roadblocks that you might be experiencing? Um, and all of those awesome things. Next, there's been a lot of questions about how to get the legendary merch. I got my t-shirt on this morning. Head over to BeLegendary.shop. We have a variety of legendary merch from hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, phone cases, towels, you name it, it's in there. Um, head on over to BeLegendary.shop and grab your legendary merchandise. All right. We got people commenting. Good morning, Alexis. It's your first time joining. Welcome to the show. I love it. And without further ado, from zero to 32,000 32, followers, work from home mom of two. Welcome Haley to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, Happy so Monday. Hi. Happy Monday to you. Yeah. Excited. So where are you joining us from this morning? Um, I live in Kansas City, Missouri, the, the okay. KC Metro on the Missouri side. On the Missouri side. Awesome. Sounds good. So I know you were already working from home. You've had a successful MLM, correct? Mm -hmm. If I have yes. the, the background right. So yeah. let's, let's go back to the start. You were a nurse, is that correct? Yes. Right? Yeah, I'm a registered so nurse as well. you were a nurse, and then what happened to where you even started looking and found the MLM? Like, where you were looking for something else? Um, I graduated nursing school in 2012, so it's been, oh my gosh, almost 11 years. Mm -hmm. And I, within my first year, I was like 22, I was burnt out after a year. I worked in the ICU, it was very intense. Um, I met my now husband like one month into my career and I was like, I'm going to marry this guy. I want, we're going to have kids. Like <laughs> right. I, I moved States a year later. I was like all in and I was like, I just, I don't want to do this long term. And at the time mm -hmm. I saw another nurse who was making money online and that's kind of what inspired me to jump into it back in 2015 was when I actually started my first MLM. Okay. So your first MLM, have we been through multiple? Two. Two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what, let, let's, I want to go through this evolution. What made you sure. switch in from one to the next? Um, I was in a business from 2015 to 2018. Mm -hmm. I, um, was working really hard. I was working as a nurse and I was working, I did not have kids yet. I was working probably 20 or more hours a week on this MLM business. And I was getting lots of flashy like recognition and stuff, mm -hmm. but my bank account was not reflecting that. And I, I didn't know any better. It was the first thing I had ever been a part of. And I saw someone who I had known from social media posting about another product. And um, I thought it was ridiculous, but something made me reach out. And I, at this point it was 2018. I had just had my first baby and I reached out, I tried it. I was going to tell everybody how it didn't work. And I ended up loving it and <laughs> saw how much success she was having in this, this company. And so I 
went with her and she's now one of my best friends and she's doing legendary now too. So Oh, I love yeah. it. Okay. So yeah. then the world happened. Something happened. Some things happened. Yeah. You that that MLM, which is multi-level marketing, guys. It, it's yes. it's like your own business, but it's oh. not your own business because it's really someone yeah. else's that you're your license under. You basically if they disappear, you're gone. Right. Um but, and that's where you're more reaching out to friends and family and you got to yeah. make your list and have three-way calls and all of that. Yes. Those, yes. Yeah. Calm and those types of things that you hear about. So what did, were you looking for something? Were you looking for something else that wasn't an MLM? Were you just looking for anything as an option to stay home? And then how did you end up finding Legendary? So... In uh, 2020, um, I ended up leaving nursing. My mm -hmm. my network marketing or multi level marketing business had it grew a lot in the pandemic, like mm -hmm. like 150 percent or something. It changed our world. Um, was making six figures. It was great. 2021 was even better. Um, had another baby in 2021 in September, and um, 2022 just got really challenging and. Mm -hmm. I had, um, t I don't want to say preached. I had talked a lot about, you know, like I do this for time freedom because I, I left nursing. I want to be home with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a lot of that with MLM, like time freedom, financial freedom. Um, and life happened in 2022. In April, I found out my dad had cancer. And in mm -hmm. May, he passed away. And oh, so, I'm so sorry. Um, showing up on yeah showing up on social media at that time was really hard yeah. and I felt like oh, I have to keep showing like at this point I have a team I have to be showing up mm -hmm. on social media I have people like counting on me there's weight that comes with that success mm -hmm. and I was just like I was trying I was trying and it was like it's not authentic like I'm not I'm grieving I'm sad like I'm like what just happened I have a right he was seven months old at the time and so for the rest of 2022, what kind of happened was my business followed that, right? Because I, right. I needed to step back and I learned quickly with that business model, if you're not present and showing up, you know, at the intensity that I was when I was making great money, um, everything kind of followed. So I spent most of 2022 looking for other ways to make money because I was like, we need multiple streams of income. That's something I had always said when I left nursing, I no longer had right. a multiple stream of income. Right. And so I just hadn't found anything. And so I, I spent a lot of money on courses. Um, I, I mm -hmm. dabbled in doing some like advertising for small businesses that I spent like $3,000 on a course that we really didn't have at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I made a little bit of money with it, but, um, it was just a, it was a very challenging year. So 2023 came and me and my husband were like, all right, this is our year. This it's a new year. We can like start fresh. And I saw, um, Emily or M Walcott, mm -hmm. say last name, yep, about how, how 2022 was such a hard year for them and how mm -hmm. she was just sharing her story and how she, they had to cancel all their subscriptions and they mm -hmm. lost their internet and, it resonated so much because I was like, we literally canceled all of our subscriptions. We stopped going out on date nights because my, my income went was cut in half, 50% right. from 2021 to 2022. Yeah. And we made do without me having to go back to work. Like it was very, it was very challenging. So I saw her sharing about this and I was like, okay, what is it? So I, I got her ebook. I got the course like immediately and I dove in. I think I did like day one through three <laughs> the first day that I got it. And I just jumped in and I was... I was sold and that was in January. So wow. ever since. yeah, it's been a so, journey. Yeah. You know what? It, it, it really isn't about like, Hey, we need more money. It was about right. my goal is I have two little ones and I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm yes. going to try all the doors. Right. Cause I yes. think you even like dabbled in Amazon and we, yeah. you know, you did, a, you, you, you went out and you were open to try new things. 100%. See if it yeah. fit you. And I think yeah. that's really important to go, you know what? And that's what I love about the challenge too. For seven bucks, you get to decide, is this 
is this, does this fit me? You know? Oh, I think we lost Haley. Haley's frozen on my end. Is she frozen for you guys? <laughs> She's definitely frozen on my end. Um, or did you guys lose me? Jaylin, Roxy, did I go? Okay, she's frozen. All right. Hopefully, Haley will be back. <laughs> we'll pop her off till she hops right back in here. So what I think is important, first of all, thank you for the comments about this weekend's email that some of you, that every, hopefully most of you received. If you haven't taken a look, I talk about call to actions, how to vary them up, and how to grow your community, how to grow your following beyond just asking for a sale all the time. Um, so to the comments that thanked me for and that they saw value in that, I'm so happy to hear. I love that. Um, if you haven't checked it out, go check out your weekly email from Legendary that hit your inbox yesterday. Um, what I love about Haley's story so much is she didn't have boundaries of no. It was, well, let's check this out. Let's see what this does. And I think even when you commit like, oh, I want to start a digital marketing business. I want to go all in with this. There's still so many doors as you move through this. You can't limit yourself. You can't go, okay, I'm only going to do this. I saw one person that was successful. So I'm just going to completely copy them all together. Um, you've got to be able to open your mind as you're learning and go, how does this fit for me? How does this work for me? Um, and that's when you're really going to stand out. That's when you're really going to um, make it your own. Haley's back. We're so excited. <laughs> no idea what happened. Can you hear me okay? I can. You just are all good. Okay. So I was just talking about how I loved how ultimately you didn't put boundaries and restrictions on yourself. No matter where you said yes, you just kept going down that path to really evaluate it for yourself. And I think even people that go through the challenge that say yes to starting a digital marketing business online, at somewhere along the line, we still, we start saying no, we start putting up walls. We start going into a box and saying, I only can do A, B, and C. And if those three things don't work, I'm out. But it's like, you've already committed to months of your time. Let's, let's, let's go all in and really test things and be open. And like, does any of that resonate with you? What comes to mind as you hear that from me? Uh, when you're talking about time, um, I think it comes down to like comparison. So um, I was thinking about this earlier, like, especially I, I see a lot of people in the legendary pages at, like commenting like, oh, it's been this long and I haven't made a commission or whatever the comment is. And um, I think we start comparing our timeline to other people's timeline. And mm -hmm. same with like, there were people that had a great 2022 and had a you know very successful financial year and, and all of those things and i think the second you start comparing is when you like that's when you fall off and that's when you get into that negative space and then you quit right you stop trying mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just sticking like to your own journey knowing your timeline looks different and it doesn't matter to put a deadline on something that could be massive, like really change your life like this mm -hmm. to put a deadline on it and be like, well, if it didn't happen by that day, I'm done. When you could be like, it could be two weeks from the time you quit that you really, you know, right. Start seeing it, success. I think this, the, the deadline, let's talk the deadline. Yeah. I'm going to give this four weeks. I've heard that a couple of times. I'm going to give this three weeks. I'm going to give this uh -huh. 90 days. And what I challenge those people, what I want you to go back, if you've given yourself a deadline <laughs> and you're getting close or you're past the deadline, that's putting the responsibility outside of you. What did you do in those 90 days? Have you looked at your content in the 90 days? Did you make any changes or is it the exact same piece of content with the same angles, the same call to actions, no audience, that's identifiable. Nobody knows your story. Like, did you really go all in or did you adjust 
do the bare minimum and then go, didn't work. But at some point, you got to be really honest with yourself, so to speak. Have you ever had that like self conversation? <laughs> like, you know what? I need to make, make an adjustment here with how I create content or how I speak to and view prospects and viewers. Yeah. Um, so I've, I get on these calls a lot. I listen to any trainings that pop up. So I've been mm-hmm. on, um, I've listened to obviously M cause she's who I saw when right. I started, right. um, Josh Davis. Is that his name? Josh Smith, the dad yep. entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was someone else and they all had said, cause I'd asked like in my videos, I had asked questions and a lot of times people will respond and mm-hmm. give you advice. And they had all said, you should start new accounts for your affiliate marketing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I have 32,000 followers on this account that I've built. Um, But that account is for my network marketing business. And I share a lot of recipes and mom stuff. So Mm -hmm. I started sharing affiliate stuff and people, it wasn't getting any engagement. And it was like, because people are confused. Mm -hmm. They're like, what are you sharing all of a sudden? And so I had been told this three times by people who were having a lot of success and I was not being coachable as we like, I like to call it. <laughs> and I was just like, well, I'm not going to do that. And so I just kept posting. And so then I saw Chelsea, um, mm-hmm. don't know how to say her last name, but I saw her on one of the wake up legendaries and she started the same t- time I did. So mm-hmm. side note with the comparison, like I have not had the mm-hmm. success she has, but it does not matter. Right. And, um, mm-hmm. I let her inspire me. I'm like, if she can do that, like I can do this. But she got on and she was talking about how she started all new accounts back in January when she signed up, probably because she was being coachable and doing what people that had success told her. And she's having massive success and she's built these followings just for her affiliate marketing business. And so for some reason, when I heard it that fourth time, I was like, okay, I got to go make my new accounts and start posting on those. And everything has just felt more like in flow and better and like at ease, if that makes sense. Um, And my, this business is I'm all of a sudden, like there's more commissions rolling in there's high tickets rolling in. I'm like, okay, like let's listen to what the people who have had success say. And even though it was uncomfortable, because Chelsea had a, Instagram that had like 65,000 followers or something. Right, right. We started brand new and I was like, okay, I'm three months in, but like, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to try it. And sure mm-hmm. enough. So being honest with yourself, like, am I being coachable? Am I doing the things? Am I taking the advice and implementing that? I hear other people mm-hmm. sharing that sort of thing. And I, I'm usually a very coachable person. And I was like, wow, you are, are not being that. <laughs> so, you know, and it, it's building your audience and trust and not switching on your audience and offer. But the other thing I think a lot of people overlook is you have to build trust with the platform, Mm -hmm. with the algorithm, with the computer that's scanning your account. If TikTok bots, whoever it is that decides where your content goes for the algorithm, can't figure out who you're talking to, or you keep switching it, they go, oh, they got, to, they got some shit to handle and figure out first before I'm going to throw it on the For You page. Yes, yes. And it, 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 it's not a real person that's determining that, but it's scanning content and going, oh, this one just called out moms. This one now is looking for a totally different age group. This one's now looking for working parents. Um, and it doesn't match. They can't find your audience for you to push out your content to. Yeah, they need to have like the bot needs to have like clear guidelines that knows exactly what you're trying to do and who you're trying to reach, who your content is for. And if you're too broad, it can't figure it out. And if you're hopping around, it's like, oh, this person's a mess. So I'm not going it's not safe to put this content out to the masses. Right. So you have to, and if you've had an account where you're jumping all over the place, you probably should start over (laughs) Yeah, because you've already told the algorithm that you don't know who you're talking to yet. It's huge. It's huge to dial in your audience. And if you are in the 
the pet niche. You can't just say, I want all pet lovers. You got to pick, pick a pet for me. At least pick a pet. If you're in the wealth niche, make money online. You can't say anybody that wants to make extra money. You got to dial it in. Yes. There's so many different subgroups within any niche um, that it's crucial to be able to clearly identify who your audience is, who you're trying to reach and who you are in every piece of content you put out. Um, but was it, how scary was it to start your, start over? Oh, when okay. you had a big following, you'd already put so much work into building it up. Yeah, it was, over. it was, uh, a little frustrating. <laughs> well, and like I started a new Facebook page too. And I was like, really, I'm getting like five views on my reel. But now just being consistent over the last few weeks, they're up in the hundreds and my TikTok's up in the like thousands. And it's not even that so much as the engagement on TikTok and Instagram with these newer accounts. I'm not getting massive views, which honestly is when people reach out, it's kind of um, encouraging to them because they're like, I see you don't have a huge following and you're mm -hmm. doing this and you're making it work. Or I see you don't have viral videos, but you're doing this and you're making it work. And I'm like, you don't need viral videos. You need to right. know who you're talking to and getting those people engaged and watching and commenting and following and all of those things. So I mean, it's been fun, but it was hard. <laughs> that is the biggest, I think that's the hardest pill to swallow is get over the vanity metrics. Yes. Vanity metrics is just viral views and followers, but you can have, you can go buy followers. You can get a ton of followers on your account. You'll never make a dollar off of them. Yep. And it'll confuse the algorithm of who they're supposed to show your content to. So you probably won't make any money at all, but you got a huge following. Um, but that doesn't equal your bank account. Right. It only equals if that following isn't engaged, excited, but a following of 500 that are all about you, a couple hundred all about you that are all in sending messages and commenting and liking and learning who you are and excited about your next video coming out. That's what ends up depositing into your bank account. That's what gives you the freedom of time. That's what will keep you motivated also to keep going and you won't care about what your numbers are. Exactly. It's a lot more fun than just the views too. Yeah. Well, because now you have a community. Yeah. You're not just, you, you know you're reaching somebody because somebody's responding back. Yes, exactly. Instead of just trolls and random spam comments on a viral video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <hot. laughs> so how has your partner responded to trying different things and all of, and then going, you know what, I, I know I've, I've done these things over here, but now I'm going to start this. I'm going to go down this path. How did that conversation go? Um, he I am very blessed that he is so supportive. Mm -hmm. um, I think he knows that you can make for, for years. I didn't make much as far as like an income with, you know, doing network marketing and stuff. But then he saw for a couple of years that it was possible to really make an income online. Like it, it really did change our life. Um, and so I think that has helped. Um, but through that, all of that, he supported me. He was, I mean, I was still working as a nurse. So I was still bringing income because we were just, we, can, we just cannot do me staying home without having an income. It just didn't work for us. Right. And um, so he's just, been, he's been so supportive. And last year, I mean, he, he will just say to me, like when I invested in that course for advertising for small businesses, he was like, I mean, I, I know you can do it. Like, cause mm -hmm. he's, he see me do it and he knows, like I sit down and I work and I do the things that I'm not just like a, buy it and then try for a couple of days and, and quit. Right. Right. Um, and this, when I started this in January, made a lot of sense to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked, talked about it. We talked about the blueprints, all of that. And he was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And it's kind of already in line with what I was doing with network marketing. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, with posting yeah. content and stuff. And so um, 
he's been very supportive. We haven't seen a ton of payoff um, mm-hmm. until this month. And all of a sudden, like this morning, he was just like, I don't know what's happening. Like <laughs> we just see the income rolling in now. And it's been months that, you know, I could have been like, oh, so-and-so's making this much already. And so-and-so's making, and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm getting those commissions. I'm getting those small commissions. I got another commission. And he's like, all right, like it's coming and just believing. And yeah, I think without that support, it would have, it's, it would have been all these years very hard to keep yeah. going. So he's probably been the biggest, like played the biggest role in all of this, supporting me and <laughs> encouraging me to keep going, even when I'm like, He's got, he's an engineer. So he's very like, well, I get that budget <laughs> spreadsheets yeah. has to make sense in my brain. And I'm like, very black and white. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like entrepreneur, <laughs> like dream, let's dream big and meditate and manifest and all this. And he's uh-huh. like, all right, Haley's doing another thing. <laughs> but he's <laughs> like, I know she can do it. So, but you know what? He probably knew that was your personality going in from the start. And that's why he loves you. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I, I want to answer this question, David, the biggest question I have, whether or not people are making money via actual affiliate marketing, or is everyone just promoting legendary? So first and foremost, we have thousands of people that come through our course every month. Um, a very small percentage of everyone that goes through our course actually become a, an affiliate for legendary. You may be seeing a lot of legendary affiliates because that's what the algorithm is showing you because that's what you've told the algorithm you're interested in. So that's a, that's a hard thing to balance is like, wait a minute, this is all I'm seeing. If you go start a new account on TikTok right now, you won't see a drop of it. I promise. Yep. Next, almost every, every third post on Facebook, let's just use Facebook as an example, is a sponsored post. And the majority of those are affiliate offers, whether you realize it or not. (laughs) So (laughs) there are tons of ways to be an affiliate marketer, whether you're an influencer, there's lots of different words for it out there. Um, But if there's a link in anyone's bio, they're making a commission and that's what affiliate marketing is guys. (laughs) So yes, it is a lot of people are making money with a digital marketing business online. Um, many even focus on just doing coaching or having their own courses. And within those courses, they have affiliate links. Mm -hmm. Um, it is just the model. It's very common. It's been around a bit and only getting stronger and people don't even realize it. I saw someone say they, they never buy anything through a funnel. And I would like to argue that's probably not true. If you've bought any item online, you have been in a funnel. If you've given your email ever, even once, which I think is kind of hard to not do, if you've ever given out your email, you are in a funnel. Um, So I think that's important to realize a few of these things that exist already and have existed. You're learning the skills, how to build those out yourself in any niche that you are excited and passionate about Um, because everything's for sale and every business needs marketing. And if they can save ad dollars by having affiliates do the promoting for them and pay out commissions on the back end on a guaranteed sale, they're all for it. It is absolutely a way for companies to boost their marketing budget um, without a lot of risk. So affiliate marketers, digital marketers are absolutely needed. So I needed to address that piece. (laughs) When you heard that comment, how do you feel? Do you get that question from your own audience sometimes? Um, I, you know, I haven't got a lot of it and maybe it's because I have a new, a newer account. Cause Mm -hmm. I, I see people saying that like, Oh, you're just promoting a $7 course or can you be, I have people that have taken the course from me and I have my own Facebook group now. And Mm -hmm. there are people, that are just starting like Amazon storefronts and that's all they want to do. And that's great. Right. Um, yeah. I tell people, I'm like, I think everyone shops on Amazon, don't we? So if you're not an affiliate, like you should be, because if you're shopping on Amazon, you might as well take a little bit of that commission and share with people what you bought on Amazon. Yeah. Um, but I haven't had a ton of people, a ton of that pushback yet, but I don't, again, my, my accounts are 
smaller since I restarted. Um, and I'm very targeted towards uh, nurses and stay at home moms. So that's it. The, kind of the people that I'm chit chatting with. So let's talk Facebook group. Cause that's a beast. People don't realize it's a beast. It, you definitely have to decide every day you're going to show up now to your group, not just to your social channels, but to your group. How did, when did you decide was the right time to start it? Did you start it with just a few people? Did you collect some waiting to join and then add them? Like, what was your strategy with your group? Um, I started it right when I started the affiliate marketing, when I, mm -hmm. like, right after I finished the course, the 15-day challenge. Um, because again, that's what I had seen someone else do. And I didn't really do anything with it. But I did start adding people to it. I okay. have it in my emails to join my group. Mm -hmm. And um, I have put my group link into my link on my social pages. And um, now I am seeing people just funnel funneling in there. Mm -hmm. Like every day I'm getting a request to join it. And it's just coming through my content, my emails, my links. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the the Facebook group training that we have. Um, I think it's in the blueprints, but uh, they say like, you don't have to post 16 times a day, every day of the week, but you do want to be in there giving a lot of value. And so I'm trying to target it to the people in there and saying like, what questions do you have? And then hop on a live so I can answer those or just give out advice that I'm learning from other people. Mm -hmm. about social media or how to start or how to do hooks or call to actions or just trying to give free value in that group mm -hmm. and then answer their questions because I was put into a group when I started and um, it was really helpful with questions and having other people to, to talk to. Yeah, you needed that. You, you needed that smaller community. So yes. being and creating an environment that's like you, <laughs> you yes. created your own for someone else. And for someone that may be watching that hates groups, great, then don't start one. Exactly. Like connects with you. Don't, you know, that, that's why I'm, I always say start with the platform you love the most that you connect with, that you just used as a consumer the most. Start there. You're most likely to post more. It's going to be a little easier to use all the features and the whatnot. You'll just feel more confident with it, um, which will then come out. Um, so I know you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram. Are you also using your Facebook? Do you keep that out of it? Um, my Instagram, I made a new Facebook page. Okay. Um, I don't focus as much on that. It's, yeah. I get them, I think, cause it's just getting started, but my Instagram, my new Instagram account posts directly to it. So my Facebook page is still getting mm -hmm. like three reels a day mm -hmm. and I'm watching it grow. Like the first week I got like no followers. I was not getting any views, but Facebook was just waiting to see like, okay, is she for real? Is she going to keep posting? Is she serious? And who are we sharing her stuff with? And now again, consistency and just putting that content out there. And it's so simple because I'm already posting on the Instagram anyway, the Instagram account mm -hmm. and I have it set up where it automatically uploads. And then it's just a matter of having to go, cause I have a personal Facebook. So this is like a business page. Um, but again, my personal Facebook page um, is very like mom's recipes, my family. I've had some viral videos on there, but it's recipes. <laughs> so like it just didn't make sense again to try to start to switch over. So right. you could like promote like a high end, you know, products for your kitchen yes. that you use <laughs> as 100%. you're cooking and things like that, right? Yes. So that would match yes. that niche for someone trying to figure out what do I do in this niche, right? Yes. That would be one way to do it. Yes. Um, Definitely. I have the intention of, um, I've looked at some like the R place pans because we use those, mm -hmm. a lot of that crock pots. I mean, you can do cooking stuff through Amazon. So yep. yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm really passionate about the wealth and the make money online it's it's with with network marketing again like i really wanted to help want to help women make money online and so for me it was like let's let's get this going first and really help women like especially after what we went through last year like 
change their finances. Um, but I also, I love to cook and I love recipes and I love, I still post them on those accounts every day. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like, why would I not do affiliate programs for this stuff? Yeah, totally. So guys, she created a new Facebook page, which is a business page. Yes. Not Facebook terms and conditions only allow you technically to have one personal profile and then you can make all, you could probably make a, you can make unlimited pages. There's a lot of pages you can create. They're never tied to each other. They don't communicate with each other. You just see it. It doesn't go out to your friends unless you were to share it to your personal profile. Um, but you can make tons of different pages. That's how she chose to set up her account and on her personal profile where she also has friends and family, she's sharing recipes and things like that. So there's a lot of confusion about um, people think Facebook page is the same as a profile as this, you know, so I wanted to at least clear that up for everyone that's in the comments right now. What was, was there a roadblock? What was your biggest roadblock when you first started out with this part? Um, definitely the comparison that I just talked about, like, that's what I had to work through. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I'm already on social media, I already make content, I already know what I'm doing like this. Mm -hmm. Not that I thought it was going to be easy. But I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the next person saying I got like, six high tickets a day or what, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, my ego, basically, and comparing okay. myself to other people. And then right. it was like, I just, if people that you're following in this space, like who maybe are promoting legendary, for example, like, are inspiring you to keep going and to do this and that you can do it too. Perfect. Like it's great. Mm -hmm. Follow them, watch their stuff in moderation. Mm -hmm. But if you get to a point where it's making you feel bad about yourself or that you're not doing that, or you're not where they are, then you got to like, you got to keep going. Right. So I, I unfollowed some people, um, find the people that resonate with you that inspire you that you can also do this because they're just like you. And, um, that, that was my biggest, Honestly, it's just been a lot of mindset work, personal development, listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. um, listening to meditations in the morning, and um, lots of like affirmations. I do a lot of that kind of stuff. So I think that's I, huge. I, I yeah. invite everyone to do that. It's everything. Mindset is everything. And surrounding yeah. yourself to stay motivated, to stay in the right headspace is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Where you put your focus is where your next day comes from. <laughs> yeah. And if you are a busy mom or a busy dad, got a nine to five, whatever your situation may be, and you only have 30 minutes or you only have an hour a day to put into your side hustle, your digital marketing business and whatever you're going to do within that. If you spend 50 minutes of it focusing on comparing to everyone else or having a pity party, the 10 minutes you do put into your business aren't going to be so positive, are not going to be so motivating, are not going to be so great. No. <laughs> I found at one point my Facebook feed, this was a few years back, was like leaving me in a feeling of dread. And I just needed, I needed to get rid of the five people that were just commenting even though they were family members posting yep. something negative every day about the world, the news, the government, whatever it may be. We just went mute and mute and mute and block and unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. And soon enough, within a couple days, my entire newsfeed turned into a place that was motivating, uplifting, made me smile Yes. You have control over what you see on social media. You just have to tell it what you want to see and what you don't want to see. And yes. if it, it starts weighing you down, that's not going to help you move forward. You know? M mine is the same way. I, m I, especially like during <laughs> election years, I, I, I have people at like network marketing too on my team that are like, well, I just had to step back from social media because it's just too much right now. And I'm like, 
your social media is should be your happy place. And like, if you don't like it, you can change it. You can go switch up your algorithm. There's things you can do. And like my mom, I love my mom so much. I have her hidden because the stuff she posts, I'm like, you're driving me nuts. I love you. And she will say, well, did you see I posted this? And I'm like, no, I'll go look at your page. But like, I have you hidden mom. And she's like, okay, thanks. I'm like, I don't want to see a lot of the stuff you post. So I'm like, there's a block button. There's a hide. You can still be friends with them, but you can hide. And then if you want yep. to go look at their stuff, you can. But right. my Facebook page is not negative, my feed, because I have Same. made it that way very intentionally. <laughs> Same. I was like, oh, how did, like, all of a sudden something will pop. I'm like, oh, how did you sneak in here? No, no. Right? Yeah. I knew. <laughs> You're, don't, don't ruin my mental space every day. We got to stay focused because I need... I need to use social to continue growing my business or right. you know, whatever we're doing yes. Continue to move forward with the right mindset in the right space. Cause it's really easy to get kind of all of a sudden you're in like a dark alley and it's turned into something really wild and crazy, but you just got to tell the algorithm. Nope. I don't want any of these people on here or this topic. Yes. Um, and take that control. Agreed. Don't let it run you. <laughs> Unfollow is key. And if they're family, just mute them so that you never see any of their stuff. <laughs> yep. And they feel, still think that you will. <laughs> yep. <Right? Unless> you, <laughs> don't. <laughs> you don't have to block them. You don't have to start family drama. Just, you know, mute them. It's all good. <laughs> and sometimes those are the people we need to mute. Yes. If you have fear and there's that little voice telling you, you can't do this I'm, or questioning you when making, doing something new, a lot of times you can identify it. And if you really think about it to a specific person in your life. Yeah. And it might be a brother, might be aunt Susie. It might be. <laughs> so mute them. So they don't, don't give them a voice anymore. They're controlling your future. They're controlling the decisions and they don't even know they have that control. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And to just mute it. So what is your piece of advice going back to social media with two little ones to stay consistent? Mm. Um, the, the biggest thing that has helped me, again, I learned from someone who's having a lot of success here, is you don't have to create new, amazing, like, content every day. You can just, you can just create the same type of content for like the next three months. And so between that, like the same verbiage, there's some people I follow who do other types of businesses and they use the same verbiage on all their videos. But mm -hmm. if they're moms, they might be in the car pickup line in one. They might be making a coffee in the next one. They might be rocking their baby in the next one. They might be doing the dishes. Mm -hmm. So the things that have helped me the most are I just try to video myself during the day. I video myself doing laundry. I video myself in time lapse, doing my dishes, mm -hmm. Lawn, like whatever, putting my makeup on. People really like to watch that for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. Washing my face at night with, uh, in the car drop-off line when I'm taking my daughter to preschool. Like, And then I go back when I have time, usually during nap time, and I put whatever verbiage on there. And sometimes it's like people – it's, I can't believe it's still news to people that I can video myself for five to 10 seconds doing everyday things and right. make an income online. Like right. that's a piece of content. And then you can say the same thing, maybe tweak the words a little bit the next day in a video of you vacuuming. Again, yeah. if you don't like, that's me. I'm, well, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm identifying talking. your ideal audience. Yes. There's a reason behind it. So right. if you are, if your audience is, 50 year old males and up, right? You vacuuming is not going to hit their algorithm, right? <laughs> even though the messaging is, you may even call out your yeah. audience, but the imaging doesn't match. So it, that's what matches Haley's ideal audience, right? Um, and people want to see everyday things. We were into reality TV. It's just yeah. the the time of life we're in right now when it comes to marketing and social media. There was a point where everything needed to be like professional looking. Um, as an example, 
Tarte Cosmetics for all the ladies out there and for the men. There is a company out there called Tarte Cosmetics and they do a lot of influencers and things on TikTok. And there was some drama. There was an issue with an influencer and their CEO came on to explain and apologize. But her explanation video was not a formal CEO in a fancy outfit with a pretty background and perfect lighting. She was putting on makeup in her bathroom. That's how she did a get ready with me to explain her, their position, their apology, their explanation, very formal company statement, but in a way that still connected to the platform, to the audience, and they got a crap ton of views on it. I bet. It was still authentic to what people want to see and engage with. And that's, that's huge. Yeah. That's why your videos of everyday life, like Haley's human, Haley's a mom that's dealing with laundry and vacuuming. And if she can do this, I can do this too. It's relating to your audience. Oh yeah. 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 Have you found, have you started doing any of the longer videos? Are you seeing those perform for you? If you have talking? Yes. Um, especially in the last like two weeks, if I just get on and I'm talking and I'm, I try to educate. So whether it's replying to a a comment that someone's asked a question or I'm just explaining something in relation to affiliate marketing or digital, whatever it is on my page, Mm -hmm. the talking videos. And again, like not, I mean, thousands of views, but not like a million, but lots of engagement. And I think it's just because it's real. It's me just talking and what people want to hear your voice and want to to yeah. relate to you and know you better. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And so the talking ones are usually just a little bit longer anyway, like up to three minutes. I haven't done like 10 or anything like that right. yet. But even three minutes, that's huge. That's yeah. big right now. I know that because TikTok's been in the news and they want to prove that they are of value <laughs> to the world. Um they're starting to get on making sure the content they're putting on for you page is offering education and entertainment. Um, and they're pushing out longer videos that aren't seven seconds like it used to be. Right. Right. That was fooling the algorithm right now. It's not really working and that will keep adjusting and changing. And you can allow that to frustrate you in the online space, or you can be like, yes, this is why I love it. My ADD gets fed. I get something new, (laughs) try something new. This works with me and go for it. Um, You know, the the ideal length, I would play around with different lengths, Michelle. Um, And do like Haley said, the same really piece of value, the same topic just present it in a variety of different ways and see what your audience gravitates to. So I want to leave you with the last word, Haley, for anyone brand new in the challenge, what's your piece of advice that are still skeptical, worried, scared, all the things of emotions. What's your advice to them? I would just say to, to keep going. Um, you're in the right space. Any, I believe anyone can make money and make a living online. Um, there is nothing special about anyone who's already doing it that you see out there having success. You just need to believe in yourself, be coachable, listen to what the, what people are telling you is working and do it. Mm -hmm not care what people are going to say about you. Cause it just, it doesn't matter. Like you got to do it for you and your family mm-hmm. and, and, and be consistent and keep showing up and the vanity metrics, like don't let that deter you from what you're doing. Even if you're posting, like switch up what you're posting, but you got to keep going and you will find something that's working for you. And the more authentic you can be with it, the better, like that's what, there are people out there just like you that, are going through something or having challenges that you have a solution to. And so it's almost a disservice if you're not out there sharing it and how you can help other people. So I would just say, ignore the views and all the vanity metrics, keep going and be consistent, be coachable. And you got to just believe that it's happening for you. Like every day, if you're just saying like, 
it's coming. Success is coming. Success is coming. Like it's happening for me. Even if you don't see it yet, like you just never know. Like I just, I kind of said that at the beginning, like that's been me since January. There hasn't been any like massive transformation. And all of a sudden May, we're just like, our life right now is completely right. different. Like it's right. me and my husband are both just like, this is insane. So yeah. you got to keep going because if you stop, like you, you could be two days away from something really popping off and your whole life changing. Cause we're like one video, one person away from doing something really big and changing your life. So you, you can do it here. If other people can do it here, you can do it here. Like we're just regular people. So totally. I love that. Perfect. Perfect way to kick off a Monday, kick yeah. off the week, get inspired, get inspired to take action and to keep going. And uh, ultimately we got to believe in ourselves and we got to be open to share ourselves because we're many of us, if we're showing our face on camera, we're building a personal brand guys. So you yeah. gotta, you gotta put yourself out there a little bit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Haley, for coming on. We got to have you back. Um, so yeah. keep us posted on your progress and uh, hopefully we'll have you back soon in the next few months. Oh, I hope so. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, my it. pleasure. All right, everyone, you can go follow Haley on TikTok and Instagram at Make Money with Haley. Haley is spelled H A Y L E Y. Um, Make Money with Haley on TikTok and Instagram. Another amazing episode. We are back tomorrow with, once again, another guest. We are, I believe, we're over 700 interviews at this point of students that have come through Legendary and built an amazing digital marketing business. Um, it's just more proof in the pudding, <laughs> as my mom would say, um, to just keep going, keep learning, and apply. As always, stay legendary, everyone. Peace.